we have an amazing group of people that have stepped forward out of this county from all walks of life to uh, uh, defeat this Glenn project. And so uh, I'm pleased that I have a lot of backup here and very powerful, uh, dedicated uh, citizens in Kent County uh, behind this. I was so disturbed that I said, I've got to put together a web page, and I did so. And uh, 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 um, right after Christmas, and wrote a letter to the spy, which was published in two hours. Uh, and that alerted everybody, I think, in the county that this was a real project. And people came forward immediately. And our comprehensive plan for Kent County may be one of the best in the state for preserving our way of life. And uh, looking ahead, uh, the commissioners appointed a select committee of citizens here to look at what we should be doing for clean energy in Kent County. And they came up with a number of recommendations, wind, solar electric, and others, and uh, that was adopted into our zoning plan. We are not unfriendly to green energy. And as a matter of fact, uh, down in Chestertown, there's a cooperative now underway for solar electric. People save money by joining this, uh, this uh, cooperative and having solar panels placed on their roofs or sheds. And so we are very definitely pro-green energy in Kent County, and so is our organization, Keep Kent Seen. We learned about this project back in uh, January. We started following it right away. Um, Queen Anne's Conservation, over its 40-year history, the oldest conservation organization on the Eastern Shore, um, with a long history of trying to stop bad development projects, uh, viewed this particular project as something that would destabilize not just Kent County, but really the entire region. And you can imagine when you see 600-foot wind turbines, such as that picture uh, shows over there, it would be visible from all areas of Queen Anne's County, uh, all areas of Cecil County, at least on the northern side. And um, we also believe that once this project gets a foothold in Kent County, that it will then march down the rest of the shore. And so, um, without knowing all of the details about the project, we quickly filed a public information act request to Kent County. We got a very incomplete record, unfortunately. Um, we have a non-staff lawyer who is uh, evaluating what we did receive and where the shortfalls are, um, and we're probably going to file another one before two months seeking to, to make the record complete. All that said, uh, we stand with our friends in, in Kent County. Um, our board is fully supported, supported of opposing this project. Uh, as I say, we have a lawyer on staff who's looking at it carefully, and um, we are going to oppose this with everything that we have. Uh, the only thing that I'd say in closing is this. We have been involved in, as I said, in stopping a lot of bad projects. Um, the Fast Sea Project in Roosevelt, which you may have heard about, is a large federal facility a number of years ago, and a lot of other projects. This project, opposing this, is going to take a true community effort. It's going to take everybody. Um, don't rest thinking that just a small group of people are going to do all the work. Because as soon as that happens, the developer wins. And so, as Mr. Graham said, I encourage you all to stay involved. Get on the website. Get on the Facebook page. Follow everything that you can. Write letters to the editor if you're opposed to the project. But stay involved. Get involved. If you have time to volunteer, putting up signs, sending out letters, do whatever you can. This is a true community effort. It's a regional effort. And we all have to work together to stop it. Thank you. Here's the hint I want to give for all of you because I know you're interested. Um, it's not like everybody says, oh wait, the application is filed and things are going to happen. The company's never going to come to all of you individually and say it's there. 
What you can do to keep apprised of what's going on in this case is periodically check on the Public Service Commission's website. And in the written document at the end, I've given the address for their website. There is, on the front page of their website, a little box that says recent cases. If you check that maybe once a week, you'll see if a new case has been instituted, and then you'll know the time has come, it's time for us all to get involved. I'm heartened to hear that some, some members and some groups already have attorneys. Um, hopefully the attorneys will be doing that to keep, keep an eye on things. Um, but that will be the trigger to begin the case. The best efficiency that wind energy ever achieves is around 30%. Apex quotes 32 percent of the contracts which they offer for leaseholders. The wind energy projects which were installed out in Garrett County about 45 years ago, which actually sit on the tops of mountains and actually have some wind, run at 25 and 26 percent. When wind velocity is low, the efficiency goes down. So in Kent County, where the wind which has been measured historically by the federal government on multiple occasions is at the lower limit of need. The average wind velocity in Kent County is recorded at about five and a half meters per second. The lowest threshold for generating wind energy is quoted at five meters per second, so we're barely above it. At that level, the wind efficiency is somewhere around 15 percent. So the first thing about this project is that it really is inconsequential in the entire energy spectrum of things. The second thing is that when you cite it in an area like Kent County, the negatives which come with it are very substantial. Wind energy perhaps has its place built in a remote location where there's actually some wind and where there aren't a lot of people nearby. But the experience, which is extensive now in California and in the Midwest, has been that people who live near these turbines find that their quality of life is destroyed. The third thing that happens is that the value of properties within two to four miles of a project decline in value by anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. And properties that are directly adjacent may go to zero in value. So that's a substantial issue. Um, as you know, I'm Commissioner Short, and I always have a lot to say. I just want to introduce Mr. Michael Richards, who is from the governor's office. He, he spent all the time to come over tonight. Also, we have Congressman Andy Harris's representative, Denise Lovely, uh, sitting here, too. So I just wanted to point them out to show you that we are well represented across the board. And, and they're here to get even more information, to go back to the governor, to go back to uh, Congressman Andy Harris, and really support us. Support us in, in making this uh, reality to say, Apex, time to move on. My only other thing is, the farmers that have signed they're still our local people. And I've said this multiple times. I respect them. I have no quarrels with what they've done as far as signing. My problem is with APEX. And I think that's what everybody's problem should be here, is with APEX.